Hey everybody, this is Calvin Waite. I trade crypto for a living. I'm not a registered or licensed financial advisor, planner, or broker, so nothing on this channel should be uh, taken as a recommendation to buy or sell. I also trade all of these things, so I probably have a vested interest in there. Um, but there's plenty of entertainment value and lots of education, so this will be awesome. For those of you who didn't know, my uh, subscription channel is live. So look at the link in the description over at CryptoInfluencers.com and you can see how I make all of my trades and what I do and what I think about everything. This channel is for uh, more hypothetical and looking at trends and the other one is for actual trading. So you might be interested in that. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> So uh, last night uh, I was rejoicing at our close because we had a close above the 20, which is really important because uh, flipping sides, uh, usually you'll find a lot of resistance against the 20. And we sure have for about 14 days. Uh, we've been on the wrong side of the 20 and yesterday was the official flip. We flipped to the other side of the 20 which gives us a lot of blue sky. And um, I, I remember saying not long ago that <laughs> we're expecting a big green candle. And it looks like today it's possible. We still have three hours and I, I don't like to speak before uh, close. That's why I reserve a lot of my comments for the pro channel because um, it's the close that you know, things have to actually close before we actually, you know, before we can count them. <laughs> we don't want to count our chickens before they hatch. But um, this is very exciting. I mean, I have to, I have to admit, uh, our 50, our 50 day is at 20,237. And a close above 20,237 is exiting the red zone. And this you know, we, we have played in the same range for quite a while. Um, and you do that enough times and things will change. Um, so I am feeling very, very, very optimistic about this. I know that at close, um, you know, it, it's very rare for us to just sneak over a line. So um, I'm expecting us to pull back and close very close to the 50 but maybe not necessarily close um, even above it or whatever. We'll, we'll be very close. That's what I'm expecting. But <clears throat> the fact that we're this close, um, just last night, uh, I told the pro channel, we, we have a very good shot of, of, of interacting with the 50, even as, as soon as tomorrow, but uh, certainly this week, because it's been dropping so fast. So we have a lot of really awesome things coming our way. <clears throat> so I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. Um, and I want to talk <clears throat> about a Wyckoff again, because the Wyckoff is essentially our recipe, recipe book for what is happening. We have so many big players, BlackRock and Fidelity and all these guys that have been around for a hundred years and have manipulated markets professionally for their entire existence and we are seeing the results of their handiwork <laughs> it is quite amazing <clears throat> so um, we had our, our huge drop so phase a was this drop to our um, selling climax so cl selling climax in the phase a uh, we we came back up and found our first level of um, our trading range. <clears throat> so our trading range started with this one here. It started here. <clears throat> we moved it higher once this, <clears throat> once these candles formed. So this was our, this became our trading range. Um, and then our trading range should have, and it began right here. And we moved it because of this move here, because we were in and out. So this, this trading range, um, was established over time. But you can see how we started in here. We started a, a tighter trading range. And then we had some moves out. We had a couple of moves outside of our trading range. And so phase B is this sort of kind of wild uh, run. And, and there's kind of this typical 
um, uh, move up and, and loss of support. I think this entire section here uh, qualifies for that. And this move here, I believe, was was more of the <laughs> the initial move up here. So phase B was sort of completed by around this point here. Well, the 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 thing we looked we look for in phase C is this spring, and we got it right here. And when it happened, <clears throat> it was literally the next day that I started talking about Wyckoff and saying that I think this is our spring. So you guys are all my witnesses. <laughs> and look at the behavior of how, of how the market works. It goes up, it comes back, and, and the test is higher. And then we come up and we start, we start establishing these little higher highs and our little lower, higher lows, and we start moving sideways and slightly up until we enter phase D, which is our <clears throat> sign show of strength. And um, if, I, if I change this chart to a line chart, you will see this so clearly. <clears throat> so here's our spring, spring. Our next move up was here. Here's our next move up. Our move back to the bottom of the trading range. Here's our test bottom of the trading range, moved up past our recent high, that's this move here. We moved back down and we came back in uh, very close proximity to our uh, original bottoms over here. So this is our, this was our final, this was our final bottom. Uh, it is this. So I feel like we are now entering phase D. This move out is our move to show our uh, the, the, the show of strength in our market. And um, you'll notice that uh, the artist who wrote who uh, kind of put this in, into, uh, into a chart, you'll see that, that there was sort of a fake out that we didn't reach new highs until we had a, a decent move. But you can see that this move is um, more than halfway. And in fact, the, the retracement is halfway or slightly lower. And so this move needs to continue um, to move out up to about a, a, a third or somewhere in here. It, it's not necessarily going to hit our uh, upper range of our um, of our trading range um, before we have some sort of pullback but the next move the, sh the, s the show of strength is a move that's higher than our trading range so that means that if we get up here pull back we're going to have to blow through our trading range and we're gonna have to start trading up in 23 24 25,000 land and if that happens then we're ready for our markup phase which is um, bringing bringing the market to a whole new place and that that takes time but you can see how this is playing out I mean it is very very textbook I mean there's um, for those of us who are aware of this and watching for it it is unfolding before our eyes it's really really quite incredible to see but from my my method um, a close above 20,237 is an exit of the red zone. This is a high probability trade. In the grand scheme of things, if you had exited here or exited here, or excuse me, where, where we exited the red zone and you could have taken a position here, 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 and I did this. <laughs> this is where I took a, p a pretty good position. Um, or you can take a position here, and in the grand scheme of things, it's all a good, it's all a good entry place. So we are, if, if you entered in, in any of these places, um, we're, we would not be putting a second order in or averaging in or doubling, you know, doubling in or something like that. Uh, this is all the same ent entry point. So this is, um, but you know, this, this move here 
has a has a much higher likelihood of remaining out of the red zone uh, for a long time. So normally, when you leave a red zone, you leave it behind and you and you move on into other ranges. Um, usually, we're looking for a green zone, and it doesn't happen. You know, it's it's not the easiest thing. Um, this is our prior this is our prior experience where we we had an attempt. So so let's think about it this way. Um, the first the first exit of the red zone back in 2019 was about four thousand dollars. So you could have entered at four thousand dollars. You could have entered at thirty six fifty. You could have entered at uh, thirty six thirty or thirty six sixty three. Do you think anyone cares whether they got in at 4,000 versus, um, I guess our low would have been around, yeah, 36? No, nobody cares <laughs> because <laughs> once, we're, once you're up to 13,000 or um, you're up to 70,000 or wherever you end up, um, these, these little things are all the same entry point. And so um, it played out the same way in 2015 as well. Oh, I have to change charts, one sec. <clears throat> so let's go back, back to there. So we had, um, this, this was kind of our upper range fake out, which is similar to um, our upper range fake out here. And we had all kinds of upper range fake outs up here. So it was that second drop that really defined the bottom. So here was our upper range. When we finally dropped, um, there was plenty of there was plenty of fake outs to be had. Um, this one would have been a, a higher, yeah. So there, well, this was our, this is our upper range fake out. Um, this one here is our entry point. We could have entered at 256. We could have entered at 243. Um, and when we, this was mixed, but it was 235. So, so back then every dollar was a huge deal in, in emotionally, a $256 entry versus a $235 entry was a world of difference. But once we got moving, were any of those a terrible, you know, it didn't matter in the end. And that's, that's kind of what I'm putting putting forth in this, uh, in my current philosophy is that um, it's not going to matter when we're when we're up to 100,000 or wherever we are going from here. Um, we're, you know, these at these entry points are going to be a total moot point. Um, we, we will consider every one of these entries um, entering as smart money. <laughs> this is a smart money entry buying in at the at the bottom of the bear of this cycle. So pat yourself on the back if you are, um, you know, dealing with the emotions and going through the ups and downs and buying at a time like this, because the majority of people are going to miss this. They think we're going to 10,000 or lower. And um, I just feel like historically and from the charts and from the Wyckoff and everything that I'm looking at, this is our big chance. So obviously, you know, you need to make your own decisions, but um, from my, you know, historical um, perspective of trading these things for 10 years, um, this is this is the opportunity of a lifetime, like any of these are. And so uh, it's just we just can't be impatient when things are when when things are going against us. But yeah, this is beautiful. This is really a nice move. This was our kind of our first move outside of our uh, lower range, and so um, we will probably have one more jag inside of our trading range. But after that move, we need to overcome this. Overcoming this will be this will kind of put the nail in the coffin that we're moving on to bigger and better things. So with Bitcoin being so confusing, um, it has definitely put the stopper on Ethereum. There's not much movement on Ethereum. In fact, this is, this is a pretty weak move 
compared to the moves that we've seen historically on Ethereum. So there are some kind of unusual behaviors happening, but honestly, um, this is what I, you know, what I what I think is that where Bitcoin crossed above the twenty, um, I think this will be this will be an important move for Ethereum. So. Uh, we can take a baby step and get a, a nice, easy close above the 20 um, before Ethereum starts moving on its next leg. But I think it's coming. I mean, we we, we shouldn't be playing around with the 20-week moving average that, that much. And we sure have interacted with it a ton during this cycle. But normally, uh, we would be way above it. And look at us here, the 20 is... <laughs> The 200 on on, on Bitcoin is at 23,500. Like we're pretty far from that, but man, it just takes a few a few good days and we're there. So uh, it was it was nice of of the S and P to give us a break. <laughs> I was kind of hoping for that last week, um, hoping that we would see a, a dead cat bounce off of the 200 week as we closed on Friday. And the market has delivered. So it's time for Bitcoin to perform and find the support it needs so that we can get on to bigger and better things. Because once we get up here and establish support, um, the chart will be its own chart. It'll be its own own thing. And, and um, macro events will have less influence. It'll still influence at some point, but it'll have much less influence. And now look at the... Um, Look at the alt altcoin market. Everything is just starting to warm up. There was a lot of bullish engulfing candles yesterday. Oh, that was another thing. We did get a bullish engulfing on Bitcoin. Um, and we got it all the way across the board. So we have a lot of coins that are moving. Um, Doge was kind of a surprise. So we're getting a handful of alts that are exiting the red zone as well. And so there's gonna be a lot to talk about tonight. Um, lots of trades to be made but yeah most most everything is in the green and uh, last night we we took quite a few um, new positions and look at these these are all they're all having a green day so uh, pretty awesome we're, we're coming along I, I like what I see and if we can just if we exit the, the red zone on Bitcoin man that is, that will be very, very powerful. And um, still, I mean, Bitcoin still has five days of these upper ranges. So the 50 is still dropping. Like it's, it's going to be dropping for about three or four more days and it'll find its own spot. So if we exit here, have our little show of strength, we will most likely find support on the other side of the 50 and we will use that as a uh, launch pad. So that's how I'm expecting this to play out. <laughs> it's cool. This is this is really fun. Um, it's we've we've dealt with some pretty pretty scary moments, um, new lows and things like that. But the good thing is, is we've interpreted it well, and I think we're gonna come out on top uh, after all is said and done. Thanks for uh, joining me on this little adventure and watching my videos. I appreciate everyone uh, out there that takes the time to listen to what I have to say, <laughs> but uh, it's really cool. All right, we'll catch you tomorrow. Thanks for making it to the end of my video. Uh, make sure you keep those trades small. Uh, don't force a trade, don't get impatient. And uh, if you wanna see how all this works, please come over and check me out on the subscription channel at cryptoinfluencers.com. Again, the link is in the description.